Well, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today here in beautiful Glacier National Park, <clears throat> crown of the continent with glorious mountains behind me where Sylvia is riding her bike all the way to the top. A beautiful Logan Pass today on this lovely Saturday, this uh, beautiful day of rest and praise the Lord. And I, um, oh, you mean this on my head? You're asking me about this? Well, this is my friend, lovely Sylvie, Sylvie Fox, a beautiful silver fox, friend of mine, emotional support pet, guaranteed to keep me warm in the cold winter that's coming here in Montana. And I have some lovely silver fox gloves here as well to match to keep me warm because the winters here are brutal in Montana. They last up to eight months. Our spring doesn't come till sometime in June. And our summer is just, you know, I, I sneezed and it was uh, spring. I coughed and it was summer. I uh, blinked my eyes and fall was here. That's it. We don't have. Our summer is so short. People go crazy. They like lemmings running to the edge of a cliff. Uh, they're so anxious to do this summer sport, that summer sport, this rafting, this hiking, because summer is over so quickly. So now people are bringing their bikes here to Glacier National Park to ride up to Logan Pass and to have behind me and have a beautiful time there in lovely Logan Pass. And I'm, I'm fighting here the, the sun, it's slowly moving and all these trees here in the way. I might move to get a little more sunshine. But anyhow, friends, this is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today here from beautiful Glacier National Park, the crown of the continent, and all these wonderful, happy little tourists from all over the country, all over the area, saying, oh, goody, I'm going to enjoy this wall I can. So you better get while the getting's good, because pretty soon this will even be shut down, and they can't do the biking up to the top of the Logan Pass. Uh, it's absolutely stunningly beautiful, and so I don't collapse of heat stroke because it's not exactly snow here yet at Glacier. I'll take these off for now. But praise God that you could be with me today for my uh, lovely little soliloquy here on Saturday. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And hello out there to Kelly Helms and David uh, there and little baby Gracie Faith in Mercy Hospital south there in st louis god bless you for your noble endeavor to rescue that child and give it a life worth living in a beautiful christian home of love and sweetness and compassion rescued from the horrible world of drugs that uh, her daughter amy was sadly involved with and could not take care of that child so here comes kelly saying, I will save that child, and oh my gosh, the baby has bonded to her in the hospital. The nurses all approve of Kelly as being a wonderful uh, new mother for the child. The doctors approve, the counselor there approves. It's just a wonderful thing happening, friends. So pray for Kelly Helms and her uh, foster care and adoption process with little baby Gracie Faith, who is totally recovering from a miserable nine months of being in the womb of a mother who constantly smoked and drank and did drugs. It was a horrible, horrible exposure of toxins to that child as it was developing in the womb. But because of your prayers and mine and Kelly's great faith in God, that child is really on a state to recovery. It's a beautiful thing that's happening right now. She called me this morning and said, Pam, it's a miracle. This child is, is making such progress. Only God could do this. I said, yes, only God could do it. Praise God. That's why we pray. God works, prayer works. So anyhow, friends, keep Kelly Helms and baby Gracie Faith over there in St. Louis, Missouri, in your prayers. Praise the Lord for the great things he has done. Hello out there to Richard in Washington, Lowry family there, B.B. Patterson, uh, Mary Beth Hadley, Lori Hembry in Tennessee, all my friends, Jill Rice Mullican out there, Tracy Lippman in New York City, God bless you, pray much that this does not fall out with missiles finally hitting New York City, which the Holy Spirit has long said many years ago is going to happen someday. Let us pray that God restrains that horror because there are many good people in New York as well and God's children are there. But even Messianic Jews told me when I was doing outreach to the Jews and Russian Jews in New York City at one time, one uh, person, her uh, sister, who was a uh, Messianic Russian Jew, she said, oh, God gave me vision 
vision by Holy Spirit, vision of missiles hitting New York City, buildings down, people screaming in pain. Even Dave Wilkerson, that great evangelist of New York City, said someday the night of a thousand fires is coming to New York City. Well, with Russia involved in defending Iran and American troops over there in Israel right now, and also our troops and military helping Ukraine, friends, America's days are numbered for freedom. And the Holy Spirit has said so years ago. Many people listening to God's Holy Spirit as they pray, they know what the Lord has shown them. I know what God has shown me, and sadly, this nation is going to fall someday, and it will not be a happy event uh, to war and many things coming. Montana is a nuclear doomsday state. We have missiles right here in the state of Montana with Malmstrom Air Force Base. And military analysts have said that when Russia and China decide to attack America and to wipe out our North American missile defense system, very few people will be left alive here in Montana, friends. It is very, very serious right now. And we did have Chinese spy balloons over the whole, uh, all of our missile fields here uh, a few months back during the summer. Oh yeah, they're mapping it out and they're allies with Russia and Russia is continually threatening to nuke America. It is not a game. It's not a joke at this time, friends. It is so serious. And I'm furious at the nightly news for not telling the American people the full scope and dimension and dangers of where America's at now. I come from a Pentagon military family background in Washington, D.C., born at the headquarters of U.S. Air Force, Bowling Air Force Base. Both of my parents worked for the Department of Defense. My father was famous with the Air Force. I have been interviewing people with Pentagon, military, CIA, and others now for years and getting all kinds of information from all kinds of different channels and people and contexts. And I'm going to tell you, and most of all, the most important is what is the Holy Spirit saying? I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit's saying, it is far more serious than what the news is even alluding to. And it's time for God's prayer warriors to begin praying and fasting as never before. If you value your future and your destiny and you live in this country, in this continent of North America, Canada included, this is truly a time for fasting and prayer as never before. It is so serious. I cannot stress that enough, friends. It is serious. And in my state, Military sources have said very few people will be left alive after Russia and China wipe out our underground missile silos here for North America's defense uh, prior to attacking the whole country. They said very few people will be left alive in Montana. It's very serious right now. And the same is true for Wyoming and North Dakota with F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming and Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. Very serious. So I take my walk with Christ so very serious and make sure that my sins are under the blood of Jesus. I walk a very straight and a very holy walk because I realize with these things so close to coming, we have no guarantee that God is going to time the coming of Christ just when our very afraid flesh wants him to come. Look what the Christians are suffering right now in Ukraine. The Christians in Ukraine, bombed out buildings, bombed out churches, Christians dying right along with the unjust. It's horrific. And how many are refugees? Don't think for a minute that Christ will necessarily come when your flesh wants him to, because Jesus even said the times are coming when you will wish to see the day of the Son of Man, his coming, and you won't see it when you want it, because he will come when God is good and ready to send him. And the Holy Spirit has already been telling Christians for decades now, prepare for trials and testings and sufferings and persecution and yes, even martyrdom. Many things are going to happen in North America before he returns. That's one thing. The Holy Spirit can't lie. And when he reveals this to so many Christians, pastors, youth pastors, people I've interviewed all over the country over the past 40 years from solid Christians who really have a walk with him and are listening to the Holy Spirit. There are many things that are going to happen before he finally comes for his own. And many of us, our faith will be tested like fire, and some will die as martyrs for their faith. Even facing the guillotines, Bill Revelation 20, verse 4, the souls of them beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God under an antichrist world government. And those guillotines, I testify, are here. They are here, friends. I've documented that for many years. Military have discussed this with me. Pentagon, CIA. CIA bragging that they're here and my reporting was right. They're totally on the side of the new world order. 
and uh, they know what they'll be used for to behead the Christians who will not go along with a new world order agenda which is very sad but the good news is whether we live or die as Christians we are the Lord's praise God and I know where I am going when this body dies thank the Lord Jesus so I don't live in grim and morbid fear friends of these things I am praising God. I wake up every day praising God. I go to bed praising God. I get on my keyboard, my auto harp, get my instruments of worship and praise out, and I am worshiping and praising Almighty God. Hallelujah. Because nothing is going to steal the praises God is worthy of from my lips. My victory is in Him. My victory is in worship, praise, and faith, and trust in the Lord. And He is my victory. The Bible says He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who trust and walk in integrity. Blessed be his holy name forever and ever and ever. And more Christians should learn the secret of victory by walking in worship and praise from the time you get up in the morning until the time you fall asleep at night, filling your whole day with praise and worship and sincerity of heart unto the Lord. Oh, what a difference it makes in your life because God dwells in the praises of his people and when we are, are praising and worshiping him his presence loves to wrap his arms around us because he dwells indeed in our love for him and our praises to him and he is worthy to be praised praise his holy name both now and forevermore glory be to God so I will spend my time in worship and praise before the Lord because he is worthy to be praised as King David said I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from my enemies the Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and let the God the Yah of my salvation be exalted praise his holy name glory be to God well friends you know that so many things are happening now across the globe and what's happening in the Middle East absolutely ties in with Bible prophecy in many ways um, and also uh, Gog or Russia the land of the north directly north of Israel is the capital of Russia Moscow or Moscow as they say in Russian and uh, it is prophesied in Ezekiel that Russia or the land of the north the land of Gog and Magog will come down on the mountains of Israel someday with her allies and it even said one of her allies would be Iran or the ancient name of Persia wow that is interesting um, and right now Russia is saying that Persia or Iran is their ally and they will defend Iran from any of their enemies <laughs> and here we have Israel the enemy of Iran and America aiding and abetting Israel so friends it's not just a regional war though it looks like it up there now with Hamas and Gaza and Israel and Hezbollah it's rapidly escalating 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 into a world war drawing in many allies of different parties different nations and friend and foe alike drawing in many other countries all across the globe so this is very serious what's unfolding and friends if you have not really taken the time as Christians to turn off that hell of vision and start fasting and praying even on your face before God for what is coming upon the world and not just North America and Canada but all over the world you need to do it now. Cover your family, your loved ones with the blood of Jesus and with prayer. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and power because you're going to need that power. Go out and prep, prep, prep. If you haven't done so already, find these quality. They're all over the internet. Quality prepper websites, survivalist websites. Get your bug out bag from your local Cabela's, REI, REI uh, Dick Sporting Goods, wherever you have opportunity or order it online get your quality hiking boots get your quality sleeping bags down I prefer 40 degrees below zero because I know there will be no electricity in many cases in the future and that could literally be a lifesaver I'm so glad that I got a north face down parka last winter because we had an arctic blast come through in Montana my propane was gone my electricity was gone my truck would not even start it was like 30 below maybe even 40 and nothing would start and it I was starting to go hyperthermic very quickly until I put on my very good quality sweaters I have sweaters for survival here in Montana but also my North Face Down Parka special Baffin uh, made in Canada Baffin winter boots that are good for the Arctic 
circle which I was at uh, for a year and saved those boots. But if I had not had those things, I could have gone into a state of hypothermia and might not have even made it by the time people were able to come down to my trailer, my flimsy trailer in that weather and rescue me. Believe me, this these will make a vast difference, especially if you don't have a wood stove or fireplace insert. If you can and you own your own home, get a wood stove installed, not pellet stove because there may not be electricity, get a wood stove or a fireplace insert. Get friends while the getting's good. If you can afford it, get one of your uh, electric, maybe 2000 something small home freeze dry machine to start drying out that produce and then freezing it and drying it out so that it will last indefinitely because when the lines of um for grocery stores when when the, the all of those lines are broken 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 and they will be disrupted uh for all the stores they will be disrupted you want food that will last for a long time stockpile now go to your local costco sam's club walmart grocery store your albertson's kroger's safeway food lion aldi's whatever you have but choose to get for your own health sake in the times to come choose to get only organic non-gmo because otherwise you're slowly poisoning yourself and that's not going to give you strength of what you need go to your local health food store and get all the top quality multivitamins and related things you can get get your bottled water supplies get your water filters i have a wonderful several wonderful catadine water filters and one of them is metal with colloidal silver impregnated in the filter and while it's more expensive than the others the metal will hold up where the plastic parts of the others may give out after a while and it's it's pocket and you're going to need water filters because there will be no purified water available in the future when things start to come down in earnest in martial law in america the supply chains will be disrupted to, to deliver to your local grocery stores your walmarts your your costcos and you had better get friends again while the getting is good so go to your computer your laptop even your cell phone get online Look up quality survival prepper, and I, I will recommend. I, I prefer organic, and I got myself some organic uh, food a while back um, for uh, times of emergency. I got it from Patagonia. Patagonia is wonderful, and it's all organic and very good. You're not poisoning yourself slowly like with my Patriot Supply. I couldn't stand that voice on the other end. I know that they're just sucking right up to these. Patriots across America call it Ma Patriot Supply. It's not like a John Wayne type voice. I thought, you people are disgusting because I read their ingredients list of some of their products and it horrified me. Like with this uh, potato soup or whatever, one of the ingredients, there were two tox ingredients in it, but one of them was a proven cause of pancreatic cancer. How many of you know that most people die from pancreatic cancers? It goes to stage four. It was a known carcinogen, guaranteed eventually to cause pancreatic cancer, linked with pancreatic cancer. Why are they putting it in long-term survival foods? Well, I have a theory about that, but it's not a nice theory. And when I did more and more research as to other toxic ingredients in it, I thought, you know, I bet this is not even a bona fide uh, emergency food supply op. I believe this could be absolutely set up by the government to uh, literally have the Patriots pay to poison themselves long term with these horrific chemicals and ingredients they have put in that food. And I figured that's why they can keep selling it so cheap. They never run out when the others do. They want to poison the Patriots. This is my personal opinion and insight because I know how wickedly corrupt the U.S. government is, the communists are, the leftist progressives, Marxists of the New World Order who want to get rid of the regular good old mainstream backbone of America, Christians, patriots, constitutionalists, homeschoolers, pro-lifers, they want to get rid of the good people and bring in their own commie takeover of a globalist, satanic globalist takeover, and they figure, hey, well, we'll just let these people pay, pay to poison themselves. Friends, do not get anything from my patriot supply. I was horrified when I read the carcinogenic chemicals they were adding to this food. If that's all you're living on for like months at a time and that's how bad it's going to be in America, you're going to be living on whatever you stockpile now is what you're going to be living on later for months and months and months. Over, well, right now the U.S. military is stockpiling up to 10 years worth of emergency food supplies in the deep underground bases all across America in full anticipation of a prolonged nuclear 
war, which is what one military source told a friend of mine. He, uh, this military source was, was from Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico. The military is stockpiling 10 years worth of food supplies. Don't think for a minute. Well, I have a few weeks supply. No, no, no. It's going to be much longer than that, friends, with what's coming. And you better get while well, the getting's good, because, honey, it ain't always going to be in your local Kroger's, Albertsons, Safeway, Costco, Walmart, Aldi's, Food Lion. Let's see, wait, which store did I miss here? <laughs> Having lived all across America, travel nation, when I pretty much know the names of the all the different grocery stores and food outlets out there. But, friends, you need to get while the getting's good. If you don't have the money, then you start fasting and praying and saying, Lord, but your word promises. And all these things shall be added unto me as I seek you. I'm your child. I love you. I trust you. You have promised. And I stand on that word of promise. God will make a way for you to have the money that you need. Like I have to do all the time in my ministry. I do not just sit around and bags of gold just fall from heaven on my head. ka, -ka -chink, So I can do these things. I have to trust God like everybody else, every other Christian worldwide does. And I do what I can. To help bring in finances but i have to largely trust in god because this is a ministry that constantly gives and gives and gives to help people in great crisis including native americans here to the north of me and the south of me and people like kelly helms determined to save that precious baby grace uh from the horrible situation that child was in with the birth mother oh god bless kelly helms anyhow friends you need to get while the getting's good and every time i have prayed and fasted and sought the lord and cried out unto him saying, Lord, it's beyond anything I can even earn because there's so much that's needed for the Bibles. Just to get uh, 50 Bibles for children is $1,000 right there. Quality Bibles, not junk. And to get clothes for the Native American children who often go to school cold and often go hungry. Clothes and food, that takes a lot of money too. When you're ministering, ministry is just it. That's it. You are ministering. You are giving. You are loving. You are caring. You are sharing. And that costs money. So that's why ministries like mine have to repeatedly seek the Lord, fasting and praying, and also repeatedly share the vision with others because that's how the body of Christ works. We give out and we receive in, just like the human heart. The whole human body would die if the heart did not receive blood into it and then just as quickly push it out to give life and nourishment to the rest of the body. And the biblical body of Christ is the same way. I love to give and give out to Christians in crisis, people in crisis, like my friend Kelly and her precious baby she's seeking to rescue and others as well. But then there has to be receiving, for the Bible says the laborer is worthy of his or her hire, as Jesus said. And the Bible says whatever we sow, we can expect to reap. So friends, give your best that you can to this cause, to reach the day of Americans whose lives are endangered every single day now by the fact that many of them have the missile silos on their reservations and in the event of foreign attack their reservations will be no more extinction events we're talking about extinction events friends for the 12 tribes and seven reservations in this state in some cases the missile silos of malmstrom air force base to defend america are right directly on their reservations or nearby like hart butte and browning and the missile silos all across the state my heart is broken 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 over the thought of only about one percent of all native americans being saved and yet when these missiles come and obliterate their reservations what is going to happen there has to be an intense crusade and i want to work i'm going to try to find some fellow native american pastors out there some wonderful people and there's some great ones like pastor dean buffalo and ronan uh, on the uh, Salish Kootenai Ponderay Res, and there are some other great ones out there. Dwayne Bullchief of the Crow, um, Dwayne and Anita Bullchief, his wife died from COVID sadly, but he is still around. Dwayne Bullchief of the Crow Res, wonderful pastor. There are people I'm hoping that I can literally network with if enough money can be raised because it's very bleak indeed, the future for the North American, uh, Native Americans here in this state in Montana. 12 tribes, seven reservations. And the missile silos are on their reservations, friends. What does that mean? It breaks my heart. So I said, Lord, if I were to even turn aside from ministry 
that I do constantly and just get a job and work eight hours a day. The wages are so low in Montana, ten, twelve dollars an hour. I wouldn't even be hardly able to pay my bills, much less fund what is needed for ministry, clothing, food, Bibles. So I have to do it God's way. And Jesus said, if you'll seek me first, my kingdom first, my righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. And so that's what I've been doing faithfully in 50 years of ministry, friends. And right now is the most serious time of America's future with what's unfolding and could unfold overnight. So we need to pray over this nation, fast and pray, because times are very serious now. And I desperately do need your help at this time. I recently depleted all of my finances completely, helping out several people in very serious crisis. I had to help out beloved Kelly Helms, whom I'm proud to help and will do everything I can to help her with that child. And then some other situations. And it's just the way there's a giving and a receiving and I desperately need to receive from the body of Christ at this time. Thank you so much, Deborah. I made sure that precious homeless people in need got your beautiful crocheted scarves and hats. Praise God. Thank you so much again for sending me your beautiful handiwork. And may God bless you and multiply your giving back to you a thousandfold. Thank you so much, Patrick, for your gift of support from Texas there uh, in Texas. God bless your mother and heal her. God bless your brother and save him, Brother John. And thank you so much. And friends, never stop and think, oh, well, uh, I don't need to support or give support because somebody else would do it. Yeah, somebody else would do it. Unfortunately, so many people, apparently, and I've even talked to people about this, they are guilty of reasoning, well, no, somebody else is going to do it. I'm going to tell you, friends, I have very few people supporting this ministry. I've gotten a lot done with a few key people financially and it's very expensive to do the kind of work that I've been struggling to do printing my own literature bringing food clothing Bibles other things to reservations and trying to help in those ways and more and literally I want to get some billboards put up of no second chance and warn people that when the nukes come and the Bible has already said the Holy Spirit has said America will someday get hit by these things he has warned his children who are willing to listen for years now I said, God, I want to get up billboards that say no second chance. When those nukes come to Montana to destroy our missile fields here, no second chance. Today, therefore, is a day of salvation. Today is the day you need Jesus Christ. There are many things God has laid in my heart. I said, but God, I can't do it. I have maybe two Bibles left to give away to precious children who need to know Jesus Christ who can never afford these Bibles. Beautiful color picture Bibles. I said, Lord, please touch those special hearts of those you know you can count on. I'm giving my all. I have given till I hurt. I can't even pay some of my bills at this point because their people's crisis is greater than my needs. And I said, Lord, please come through so I can come through for you. So, And it's all for Jesus. So friends, give Jesus your best because this is all going for the glory of God. I have no multi-million dollar mansion like Jewel Osteen. I have an old beat up Ford 1999 F-350 truck ready on its last legs with over 300,000 miles on it. Nobody can ever accuse me of taking the money that people have given for ministry and then blowing it on. Multi-million dollar mansions, multi-million dollar jet planes, and all these other things that so many of these televangelists do, which I believe is an abomination in the sight of God when souls are dying and going to hell across the globe and many don't even have one Bible or one church in their place where they live across the country, across the globe. What a misuse and abuse, evil misuse of the widow's tithes and offerings and the giving of God's people. I don't do that. I've laid up no treasures on earth. I typically have a hundred dollars left in my bank account at any given time. I take that precious money and invest it in Bibles. Of course, I have a few bills to pay. Of course, the labor is worthy of his or her hire, but they're very minimal. Right now, my heart is for souls, friends. Please help me in this harvest field of these great end times and last days, truly last of the last days. We are on the threshold of full-blown World War III. As Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me, for the night cometh when no man can work. And for me, in this nuclear doomsday state of Montana, the night too shall come when no man can work, and I want to reach as many souls as I can. 
for Christ. So, friends, I do need your support. God bless you all out there. Thank you, B.B. Patterson. God bless you, Mary Beth Hadley. God bless so many precious people out there. Tracy, I'm praying for your uh, safety there in New York City. Praying that God will withhold the missiles a season longer. It's already been prophesied they will hit New York City. But I'm praying because of God's children there and you there, Tracy. Oh, God, hold it back a season longer. But anyhow, this is Pamela Ray, friends, with Hope for Today here at Be beautiful Avalanche. And uh, Sylvia, Sister Sylvia, is riding her bike all the way up to Logan Pass, praise God. She's having a blast doing that. But it's also important for her cardiovascular health because she struggled at times uh, with her health. And she has to keep her heart going. And so how wonderful she could ride her bike up there. I said, you go up the top of the mountain. I'm going to stay right here and make my videos for my people. So friends, thank you so much, Mary Beth Hadley, for helping out dear Kelly. She is so grateful for your help because it's not an easy task at her age to take a newborn child and rehabilitate it and minister to it. But she is determined for the glory of God to raise that child in a Christian home and to give it her very best. So keep Kelly Helms in your prayers, Mary Beth, and all you other viewers out there. Keep me in your prayers because I'm saying, God, I live in such perilous state right now with Russia indeed threatening nuclear strike in American soil. Before that ever happens, they will take out Montana, Wyoming, and North Dakota because they're a North American missile defense system. But if all the good Christians run away because they're afraid and afraid to die, well, where does that leave all the lost that remain here? I just can't run away. I want to reach as many souls for Christ as I can. And I'm not leaving here until the Lord says it is time to move on. But until then, I will hand out every tract. I will share Christ with every person. I will do whatever I can to reach one more soul. Native American or cowboy or all the rest, I will reach them for Christ in this state. So friends, please subscribe, hit the like button, and leave your comments below. And I want you to know that there has been some very dark interfering with my YouTube channel. I, people have been deliberately unsubscribed that never unsubscribed. There's been some shadow banning and other things. And um, I need your prayers, friends, because I have to get these messages out while I can. So stand with me. And God bless you all. And I am praying constantly for this nation, for all my viewers. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' sacred holy name. And may he hold back these terrible times to come and yet a season longer for all of us to make the effort to reach one more soul for Jesus before the night cometh when no man can work. God bless you. This is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today. And I will see you again from Glacier National Park. Bye-bye for now.